Summary of Super Attractor by Gabrielle Bernstein Written by Lee Shullery and Quickread Narrated by Alex Smith Introduction As a super attractor, Gabrielle Bernstein has always believed in a higher power, or non-physical presence in the universe. Intuitively, she's turned it into a source of good and taps into this unlimited presence of power to heal her body, support her relationships, guide her career, and attract her desires. This higher power can be whatever you want it to be, whether it's the universe, God, spirit, inner guidance, or any other term. It simply is whatever resonates with you. The term doesn't matter. Instead, it matters how you connect and communicate with it. Through proven methods, including prayer, meditation, and practicing appreciation, you can learn how to tap into the universe and receive your greatest desires. Through Super Attractor, you can learn how to rid yourself of fear, anger, and jealousy, and replace them with positive energies that will lead to positive experiences. So, begin your spiritual path today and learn how to manifest a life beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 1. The Universe Always Delivers are you dealing with stress that seems to be consuming your life? Perhaps you're going through some difficult times or trying to manage crippling debt that makes you feel as if you're drowning. Many people today face financial insecurity and, understandably, these thoughts can consume a person's mind as they worry over how they're going to pay their bills. Their thoughts become obsessive as their inner voice, otherwise known as the ego, convinces them that the more they think about it, the more control they have over the situation. What if changing the way you think could have a profound effect on your life? This is where the three-step choose again method comes into play. Step one is to notice the thought. If you find yourself stuck in a cycle of negativity or fear, consciously step back. You can do this by noticing that your thoughts and energy are out of alignment with joy. Begin asking yourself, how do I feel right now? Then write these answers down in your journal. So when your thoughts become obsessive over your financial troubles, it is at this stage that you can begin to apply this step. You see, the more you allow your mentality to be full of fear, the further you are from allowing solutions to come into your consciousness. Fear-minded thinking puts us out of alignment with positive energy. When we're out of alignment with positive energy, we're disconnected from the support of the universe. The universe has the capacity to bring forth creative solutions for earning, managing money, and other ideas that a fear-based mind may not come up with. The key is to be in a receptive place to hear the answers. Step two is to forgive the thought. Forgive yourself for being misaligned and then celebrate your desire to shift. Continue by thanking your negative feelings and thoughts for showing you what you don't want and revealing what you do. Next to each negative thought you document, write the words, thank you for revealing to me what I don't want so that I can clarify what I do want. When we forgive our thoughts, we can release the past and accept that the present moment offers an opportunity for grace. Even a slight moment of presence is enough to direct our energy and get positive momentum to help choose a better thought. The third and final step is to choose again. Answer this question in your journal. What is the best feeling thought I can find right now? Then ask the universe to guide you toward that thought. In your journal, write down this prayer or say it to yourself. Thank you, universe, for guiding my thoughts toward good feeling emotions. As you practice this step, Remember that there may not be an ultimate solution. For instance, the thought, I'm going to be out of debt in one week, is likely to create more misalignment because you won't believe it. Instead, choose a thought that feels realistic and possible. For this to work, you must believe in your best thoughts. If you're struggling with step three, a nice way to get started would be with a statement like, I'm open to creative possibilities for abundance. This statement becomes a prayer and through it, we make a massive announcement to the universe that we are ready to choose again. The moment you have a loving thought, your emotions shift, and your energy changes. This is called realignment with the universe. Chapter 2. It's good to feel good. One of the biggest blocks to becoming a super attractor is the resistance we have to feeling good. Life is full of hardships and fear, so we've become comfortable in using this fear as a way to protect ourselves from being disappointed, hurt, or triggered. Unconsciously, we feel safe in fear, and the thought of feeling good means a loss of control and feeling unsafe. In other words, happiness is simply a reward that requires suffering to acquire. Many of us might even feel that we don't deserve to feel good. However, Gabby reminds us good things can come easily, and we are worthy of receiving them. This concept may seem confusing, and even a bit daunting, but it's much easier than it seems. 
To begin feeling good, you must simply open yourself to the universal energy of love by implementing a few of Gabby's strategies. The first method is to think it to feel it method. For instance, try remembering a time in which you felt safe and in control. Let that memory and that feeling guide you through the following steps. Next, you need to affirm how you feel. At this point, it's important to have a mantra that you can say to yourself to remind you of how you wish to feel. Perhaps saying, I'm truly taken care of, or I respect my body, is a mantra you can repeat when you start to have negative thoughts. Additionally, write the mantra down in your journal every day. Yes, each day you should find a time to sit and think about your mantra. Find a comfortable spot, sit back, and take a few deep breaths. With each inhale, concentrate on the positive thoughts and vibes that you wish to embody. This step prepares you for the manifesting to come. You see, in order to attract all that is good, you must first believe that you are worthy of it. These exercises will help you welcome worthiness and happiness and prepare you to claim all that you will attract. Remember that simply implementing these steps won't guarantee a change overnight. It will take practice for you to accept that you deserve to feel good and that the universe will deliver. Chapter 3. There's more than enough to go around. People who aim to find success in doing what they love have the same fear. The fear of being an imposter, also known as imposter syndrome. The syndrome implies that people are scared of not being worthy enough. For many years, Gabby led a training called the Spirit Junkie Masterclass, aimed at helping spiritual people gain the confidence and business building tools to inspire others by doing what inspires them. Her students came from all walks of life, including lawyers, yogis, life coaches, therapists, makeup artists, and more. Each student showed up inspired and excited to step in their power, but many shared a common fear, the fear that they aren't good enough or have enough resources to do the big work they want to do. This mentality manifests itself in all of us and is a major block from unleashing your super attractor power. One of the main reasons we experience this fear is because many of us constantly compare ourselves to others and view life as a competition. However, these feelings of envy, comparison, and judgment cause us to operate at a lower frequency, repelling the very thing we are working towards. There are many blocks that may prevent us from reaching our full potential or becoming a super attractor. For instance, we compare ourselves to others. We believe we don't have enough. We think there's not enough to go around. We need to win at the expense of having fun. We fear rejection, we have a need for more mentality, and we feel a fear of being judged. Luckily, there is a method to help you stop this cycle of negative thoughts and will make you believe that there is more than enough to go around. First, be protective of your desires. Perhaps you have a friend that is a chronic pessimist. They only possess negative thoughts and speak negatively of others. Don't feel pressure to share your goals with people you aren't ready to. You can avoid unnecessary feelings and judgments by protecting your desires and keeping your goals to yourself until you are ready to share. At the end of the day, your goals are about you anyway. Next, transcend lack and comparison through positive intention. This practice guides you to pray for others to have more of what you want from yourself. Celebrate the success of others and let go of your rivalries and comparisons. The simple practice of wishing for others to receive will put you into an energy of receptivity and the feeling of abundance will rapidly begin to attract more of what you want in your life. For example, if you're seeking love, don't feel envy or discouraged by your friend's engagement announcement. Instead, share in their happiness and celebrate her love. That positive energy will then redirect into your own life and the universe will then manifest your desires. The key to this practice is to be genuine in your feelings of wanting others to succeed. Once you realize that there's enough success to go around, your good fortune will begin to multiply. Chapter 4. Have fun along the way. One of the most important aspects in manifesting the life you want is through having fun. It's easy to wallow in self-pity and depression, but when we feel sorry for ourselves and have negative thoughts, we begin to function at low vibration energies that simply attract more negativity. However, when you bring fun and joy into a boring and tough situation, you can begin to change the vibrational frequency of what's happening around you. Think about the mornings you walk into work when you're in a good mood. People are more likely to treat you with more kindness and higher vibes. On the other hand, when you show up with an attitude, the people around you will respond with similar attitudes. When you calibrate your energy to the experience of joy, you become a magnet for whatever you think about. Spiritual guru Abraham Hicks used an emotional guidance scale to measure conditions on a 22-point scale. 
there are low vibration emotions such as fear and grief on one end of the scale and high vibration energies such as joy and passion on the other. When in the midst of fear and grief, it's difficult to jump straight to joy. Luckily, Gabby introduces a few methods that will help you quickly move from low-level thoughts and energy to a more positive state. Perhaps you find yourself scrolling through Instagram and see a friend's amazing vacation photos. Many people may experience jealousy, a negative feeling that is a number 20 on the emotional guidance scale. As you continue scrolling, that jealousy might turn to boredom, a neutral feeling that is number 8 on the scale. Boredom isn't an ideal feeling, but it's certainly an improvement from jealousy. To jump to joy and passion, perhaps focus on your own upcoming vacation or start planning one and begin to experience eagerness or enthusiasm, number 3 on the scale. The key is to always be moving in the right direction. Moving up the emotional guidance scale requires significant perspective shift that requires you to find joy in every situation. The top of the emotional scale. The first step to maintaining positive energy levels is through learning how to appreciate the small things. Find out what brings you joy. If you're an extrovert like Gabby, make it your priority to get together with friends. If you enjoy putting your brain to work, do a crossword puzzle, read a book, or take an online course that you might enjoy. If you love being outside, go for a walk or have a picnic in the park. No matter what you do, it's important that you seek joy. Gabby, for example, found joy in cooking and focused on spreading that joy with an online cookie show that she put on for fun. One important thing to note is that sometimes finding joy in dark times may feel impossible. If you wonder, how can I find joy when I'm depressed? Honor where you are at that moment and ask yourself how you can make a subtle shift. Perhaps find a new way to practice self-care that might bring you up a little bit. Never underestimate the power of watching a funny movie or taking a bath. Once you learn how to prioritize joy, you'll find that your high vibration energy becomes contagious. Gabby refers to this as always carrying a flashlight and will help the universe bring and manifest your greatest desires. Lastly, you'll find that when you lead toward joy, you are led. Chapter 5. Lift the Veil On your journey to becoming a super attractor, you'll learn how to break the barrier between the physical and spiritual world. To do this, you'll need a perspective shift, an internal transformation and then you'll find that your external world explodes with light. According to the book A Course in Miracles, we lose touch with the spiritual world when we begin to think of ourselves as separate entities from the universe. This separation makes us focus on lack, fear, and anger, which will then make our life's experiences revolve around lack, fear, and anger. The moment we choose to shift our perception from fear to love, we can experience a miracle. However, reconnecting with the spiritual world does require some work that Gabby refers to as lifting the veil. Lifting the veil requires faith and a change in perception. You'll need to learn what it means to see in light and to bring light with you wherever you go. This simply means that you must choose to see light in the darkness. Focus on positive thoughts and don't become distracted by the negative. You must focus on the love that surrounds you and appreciate the joy in the small things. Gabby recommends her meditation for lifting the veil in which you transcend the energy of this world and step into a place of love. First, find a calm and comfortable place that helps you relax. Breathe deeply. Let your thoughts come and go, and thank your thoughts. Don't judge them. As you quiet your mind, you'll begin to release the negative energies that keep your veil in place. Gabby also recommends that you journal after your meditation to keep track of your thoughts and your meditation practice. If you continue the meditation, then one day at a time, you can begin to lift the veil and move from darkness to light, from fear to faith, and from disbelief to certainty. Chapter 6. Invisible Guidance is Available to You Once you begin to lift the veil, it's time to continue pushing the metaphysical envelope and open yourself up to new forms of guidance, spiritual guidance. To help you establish a spiritual relationship of your own understanding, Gabby shares her own beliefs about the wise, loving, and compassionate spiritual guides in her life. Spiritual guides can include all kinds of spirits, including angels and archangels, your higher self, the love of the universe, and family members and friends who have passed. Spiritual guides, according to Gabby, defy the laws of nature and come in many forms. However, they all aim to realign us with the positive energies and the love of the universe. While this may seem a bit unrealistic for many, a spiritual guide can look different for everyone. Some may believe they have a loved one looking out for them, while others may simply trust the voice inside their head that acts as their spiritual guide. For Gabby, she recalls the darkest moment in her life. In October of 2005, she was living as a 25-year-old drug addict. 
She believed she had hit rock bottom and had nowhere to turn to. She prayed for a miracle and heard, Get clean, and you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams. It was simply her inner voice, her spiritual guide, guiding her to get clean and giving her the strength to turn her life around. Perhaps your spiritual guide is your inner voice, or perhaps you believe in the ability to channel departed loved ones. For Gabby, one of her spiritual guides is her friend Lauren, who tragically died too young. Lauren has helped Gabby by leaving behind her collection of books and notes that have helped her in times of need. So how can you connect with these spiritual guides? Similar to lifting the veil, you can call upon your own spiritual guides to meditation or journaling. Once again, clear your mind, think or write down your requests, and soon you'll open yourself up to hearing their advice. Chapter 7. Do Less and Attract More Life can sometimes feel as if we have a million open tabs at once. We constantly bounce between tasks and race through our days only to feel as if we've accomplished nothing by the end of it. It's normal for us to try and want to complete everything. But the secret to being a super attractor is by doing less. Trust in the universe and let it guide and control your life. In 2017, Gabby was doing it all. She was offered a life-changing opportunity to speak at Oprah's Super Soul Sessions, a series of lectures for spiritual leaders. Of course, Gabby was nervous by the large opportunity before her. She would not only be speaking to a large audience, but also to some big celebrities. So how did she cope? She called upon a spiritual guide, Wayne Dyer, a recently deceased spiritual leader. By allowing her spiritual guide to take control, she was met with a calming presence that allowed her to deliver her message with ease. As a super attractor, your job will become accepting that each day is a collaboration between you and your spiritual guides. Each day, you should allow them to take some of the control, free yourself of the burden to get everything done, and seek help when you need it. When you are ready to let go of control and connect with your spiritual guide, you can call upon them in a way that feels right for you. A few ways to call upon your spiritual guide is through meditation and prayer. Gabby provides a prayer to get you started. You can begin by closing your eyes and saying aloud, Thank you, guide of the highest truth and compassion, for revealing your presence to me. I welcome you now. Once you give up your control to your guides, you'll experience immense relief, a drop in anxiety, and a surge of energy as you stop pouring all your mental, emotional, and even physical efforts into pushing, controlling, and trying to make things happen. Suddenly, you'll open yourself up to new experiences, new ways of thinking, and even find more creative solutions to problems. Your challenges will no longer feel as overwhelming or daunting as you trust that the universe is enough to co-create the world you want to see. Chapter 8. Taking Spiritually Aligned Action Once you begin applying what you've learned in the previous chapters, you'll soon be vibrating at a super attractor frequency and become ready to learn how to direct that powerful energy into your desires. You'll be ready to co-create with the universe through fun, creative, and eye-opening practices. Gabby learned how to take action back in 2008 when she was just beginning her career as a spiritual leader and life coach. Gabby's dream was to be featured in the New York Times Sunday Style section, so she went after that dream by pitching her story to a friend who worked at the Times. He didn't express much interest, but Gabby continued to speak and teach while keeping her desire to be featured in the back of her mind. Nine months later, the dream came true and Sunday Styles called to tell her they wanted to feature her classes. Gabby manifested her dreams into reality. But how? During this experience, Gabby discovered the spiritually aligned action method. This four-step method is a technique for manifesting your desires into reality. The first step is to ensure that your desire is ingrained in inspiration and service. The key to ensuring your desire is genuine is to think about why you desire it. If that desire is shallow or only serving your ego, then this technique is not for you. Instead, your desire should inspire to bring joy to others. If that is your reason, then move on to step two. Step two is to believe that the universe will deliver. Once your intentions are true and rooted in inspiration and service, you can begin to put your trust in the universe. Start by stating your desire clearly or asking the universe to deliver it. Step three is to take action at the right time. In other words, your desires cannot be forced. Instead, your spirituality needs to be aligned for the universe to answer and manifest your desires. To become spiritually aligned, you should complete your tasks with joy and rid yourself of stress, fear, and judgment. The fourth and final step is to have patience. Manifesting your dreams will take time, but if you have faith in the universe and are spiritually aligned, it will only be a matter of time before the universe answers. 
Patience allows the universe to prepare you by gathering the support you need to take the next steps in your life. You'll soon see your desires come into form in clear, concrete, and sometimes beautifully startling ways. But how do you know if you're spiritually aligned? When you are cognizant of your emotions and make an effort to seek joy, the decisions you make will begin to feel effortless and fun. At this point, you'll know that you're beginning to master the spiritually aligned action method. Chapter 9. Appreciate and Appreciate More Once you begin living in a joyful state and taking spiritually aligned action, you'll be ready to fully appreciate everything in your life. When we're in a state of appreciation, we're actively creating more of what we want. Additionally, you become in a state of appreciation and non-resistance and in the absence of resistance if you become a super attractor. For example, when Gabby met her project manager Jessica in 2012, they instantly clicked and developed a mutual appreciation for one another, which helped both women manifest their dreams. The energy we put out is the energy we receive. So when we begin to appreciate what the universe provides for us, we begin to open ourselves up to more experiences and new ideas. For instance, Gabby's friend Alex fixated on a bad business decision that put him into a negative spiral for months. His thoughts surrounded what he should have done differently. Soon, however, Gabby suggested he change his perspective. Instead of dwelling on the bad business decision, he should appreciate what the mistakes taught him. Alex's negative energy soon disappeared and the new path forward presented itself. So, how can you practice appreciation? Think about what you appreciate each day, even if it's something small. Instead of focusing on what you wish you could change, focus on the positives. Perhaps you experienced good weather, had a good conversation, or cooked a good meal. Abraham Hicks suggests writing down a few things you appreciate each day. Soon, your appreciation will become contagious, and you'll become more aligned with the universe, putting yourself in a position to begin manifesting your dreams. Chapter 10. Let the universe catch up with your dreams. One of the secrets to manifesting your dreams is learning how to relax. Learning how to loosen your grip on reality and relying on a higher power is key to seeing your desires manifest into reality. For instance, Gabby, like many women, struggled to get pregnant. Her dream was to become a mom, but after three years, she became encouraged. The process, however, taught her that the universe sometimes needs to catch up with your dreams. You see, Gabby struggled to give up control of the process. She obsessively monitored her ovulation and her diet, and she tried to force her desires to come true. Eventually, she began to pray and meditate, which allowed her to relax and have faith that the universe would soon deliver. Gabby's dream came true in March 2018 when she finally became pregnant. While giving up control and letting the universe catch up may be difficult at first, Gabby has a few simple practices to help you relinquish control. First, be clear about your intentions. Perhaps you're struggling with making a big life decision. In this case, ask for a sign that shows you which direction to go. Keep your communication with the universe clear, and you'll soon notice the signs from the universe. For instance, many students mention seeing butterflies and flashes of light when they need reassurance. While some signs are clear, others may be more hidden. For instance, others talk about finding signs from children who speak wisely. No matter the sign, it is important to be open to all kinds of communication that the universe presents. Lastly, you'll need to practice patience. Even when you begin to feel frustrated or discouraged, keep acting from a place of spiritual alignment. Pay attention to your inner wisdom, relinquish control, and allow yourself power to deliver. Chapter 11, Unwavering Faith in the Universe. As you become a super attractor, the universe will continue manifesting your dreams into reality. Life may be going so well that you begin to wonder if, at some point, it'll all fall apart. Gabby experienced this in her third trimester when life seemed perfect. She had a healthy pregnancy, her business was thriving and growing, and her relationships were strong. In the back of her mind, however, she felt fear. This feeling of fear will push you out of spiritual alignment. So how can you avoid it? Gabby used the mantra, I choose love instead, to bring her mind back to love instead of fear. When you begin to feel fear, perhaps adopt a mantra that pushes you back into alignment. You should also accept that fear is normal. Everyone feels it at some point. Don't stress out if your thoughts begin to turn negative. Instead, follow the chosen again method and acknowledge the fear. Forgive those thoughts and focus on redirecting your energy toward love and joy. Next, you'll need to remind yourself that it's good to feel good. Give yourself permission to feel positive and appreciation. 
remind yourself that high vibration emotions will attract more positive energy. Gabby recommends that you keep up the habit of feeling good through the method called the daily design. Start each morning by asking yourself, how do I want to feel today? What do I want to be today? What do I want to give today? Answering these questions will allow you to keep your energy aligned and stay in a positive mindset. When we align our thoughts and energy with spiritual faith, we can expect miracles. Each day, you are given a choice to determine how you feel. You can choose to succumb to the fear and stress of everyday life, or you can choose to feel love and joy. Gabby suggests that you begin your journey and commitment today and say aloud, I am committed to being a super attractor. Final Summary Becoming a super attractor means keeping your energy at a frequency that aligns with the universe. By choosing to feel joy and love, you begin to operate at high vibration energies that allow you to manifest your desires into reality. When you send out positive energy, you receive positive energy, and good things will begin to happen. Unfortunately, life is full of stress, and many of us choose to feel fear and jealousy as we feed our ego. Luckily, Gabby Bernstein teaches you how to abandon those thoughts and redirect them to choose more positive emotions. Through following Gabby's methods, like meditating and being patient, you can learn how to stay spiritually aligned and manifest your dreams into reality. This has been a summary of Super Attractor by Gabrielle Bernstein, written by Lee Shullery and Quickread, narrated by Alex Smith. The End Did you like this audiobook summary? Click the like button now to support our channel and click subscribe if you want to get notified each time we post a new free audiobook summary on YouTube. You can also download our free app and enjoy thousands of other free book and audiobook summaries. Go to quickread.com app and download our free app today.